Good morning. This is Cindy. Welcome to my challenge, challenge channel. And I would like to just bring you up to date on a couple of things that are going to be happening throughout the month of July. Normally today would be a fun fold Friday, uh, but I am prepping for July. And so I thought I would take today instead to show you my prep and to tell you what's going on. And I'm hoping that you will be able to craft along with me as we go through the month. So Many of you have probably heard about Carry the Crafters Jelly Postcard Challenge. It is the the link is down below, and I will put a link to his intro video as well, so that you because he explains it very well what he's doing. But in in short, throughout the month of July, you take you make thirty one four by six postcards. That's part of the prep that I have already done. And then you take those postcards and then you decorate them as the month goes on. You post a short video or a, a photo or a TikTok or a reel or a, you know something every single day showing what you did. So yes, I will be posting a video every single day throughout the month of July. Yes, I did say you, you will, if you watch my Marguerite Miller challenges, you will see that there is a change coming to those. I had already made that decision before Kerry announced his challenge. Um, and so for, for, for the month of July, probably August and September and probably into October, um, uh, I am going to, instead of posting every single Saturday, I'm going to post my Marguerite Miller challenges once a month. At the end of the month, I will simply do a quick video and show what the challenges were for the entire month of July. Uh, at the end of August, I'll do all of August and so on, because I want to be able to take some time and spend some time with my hubby. We have a cabin and I would love to be able to get down to the cabin and spend some time with Mother Nature. And so I really decided I was going to drop doing those. Of course, then Carrie announces his challenge and I decide to pick it up. And for that challenge, you have to, on each postcard, you have to have a piece of jelly printing. You have to have a number, which is corresponds to the number, the day of the month. So on July 1st, there has to be a one. On July 2nd, there has to be a two, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and the postcards have to be four by six. And you have to post every day. That's Those are really the, the only rules, per se, that you have to follow. So I thought that would be fun because I just got a jelly, pr jelly plate and I wanted to play with it. And this gave me, uh, kind of gave me the push that I had been trying to get through and to do. And I've been eyeing those jelly plates for months and just hadn't taken the leap. And I decided to go ahead and do it. Now, this channel is not going to become a jelly plate channel. Um, it is my newest toy. It's the one I'm probably most excited about at the moment because it's my newest toy. But it is a means to an end. I'm a junk journaler. And this simply gives me one more tool, technique, one more thing I can use to dress up my journals. That's all the jelly printing is pretty much for me. But I have decided I'm going to document my jelly print journey. So I've been doing it for a week. Um, in a moment, I'm going to flip my camera around and show you some of the things that I have done so far. And, uh, but I'm not really going to talk about jelly printing at all in this particular video. That will come. I will do, I'm going to add jelly printing into my repertoire of junk journaling videos, but it is not going to be my focus, just so you can rest assured on that. Um, all right. So I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, I think I've hit everything I wanted to say. So let me take a minute and flip my camera and I will be right back. All right, I am back. Now, um, you saw these before. These are, this is my pile of numbers that I have pre-collected. There's, I think, one, at least one of every number in here. There are some, some of them are doubles and that's okay. It gives me some choices. These are the postcards 
And this I've decided already is going to be my day one postcard that's, that will do something with that. But I have all my postcards already done. Uh, there is not jelly printing on all of them. So I have to add some jelly printing on those. So I have that set and ready to go. I also have a bin here of extras. These were pieces that got cut off that can be used as we're going through here. And then I have all of this other stuff. So I have brayer off sheets. Some of these I think can be, well, some of them aren't used nearly enough. I can add a whole lot more stuff to this. This was just a picture that I didn't really care for and thought I'll never use that. So I cleaned my brayer off on it at one point. So yeah, these I will be able to use at some point either as pockets. I mean, look at that. Cut off that edge. Now we got a really cool pocket, or at least the start of a pocket. So those are my brayer off sheets. So I have those. Um, I have my lift off sheets. You know, when you clean the, the jelly print or jelly plate, you have a bunch of these types of sheets. So I have a couple of those. Those Some of those can be used again. I have, oh my glory, look at these things. I have, these are, are wet wipes, or they, they were wet wipes, they're not, they're pretty dry now, that I use to clean off and clean up when I was doing things, but I really like this one. It looks like a tie-dye shirt, and I thought, okay, that's going in my journal, some journal, some point, that's going in the journal. So I have those. Okay, now I have prints. And these at this point are my jelly plate prints. And some of them came out really cool. I played, some of them are still plain, so I want to stamp on that one. In fact, I might keep that one out. Um, some of them are just, what the heck are you doing kind of things. Playing around with stamping with, I like how that one came out. This was a fail. I put it in and then when I brayered, most of my paint came off the, yeah, that it was trying to do something similar to this one. I liked how this one came out. The mask worked perfectly. I reversed my colors. I wanted these to be green and this to be orange. And I, I got to get used to thinking backwards and thinking in a different order. So I have a bunch of these. Um, this was kind of cool. Where is it? I don't know where the other pieces of this are, but that kind of came out neat. That came out neat. These are on cardstock. The, that didn't work quite as well. So those are some of my successes and failures. And then I watched Carrie do a different technique um, and on tissue paper, on, on gift wrap tissue paper, as opposed to the wet strength tissue paper. Uh, this stuff is wet strength tissue paper. It's heavier. It's designed to, to take it. This is piece of a sewing pattern. This is just old gift wrap, old gift wrap. You know, these were some that didn't work out so well. I didn't get much of an image off of them, but I wanted to show you the ones, not much image came off of that one. I used leaves out of my garden. And what I did was I put the wet strength tissue down to take all the excess off. And then I put the gift wrap tissue on it and pulled that off, pulled the print off. And I thought those came out really neat. So there's a maple leaf and there's how it came out. And this one was interesting because this one I just did with a bunch of, I had some, I have three different size little round tops. And so I did that and so that was my wet, my, my gift wrap tissue. And then I went over it with a piece of construction paper and this came out. I really like how that one came out. Um, this was a fern. And then that was the print that came off the fern. So those are all of the things that I have to play with when I am decorating my postcards. So I have, I, I've not yet built up a lot of layers on these, and I, I don't know that I'm going to do that, or at least not do it on camera. 
Uh, but I think I want to go through some of these and, and use some of what of what's over there now and build up a couple more layers before I go to do the decorating. Because when I do the videos throughout the month of July, they will be short. I'm aiming for five to ten minutes um, where I just simply decorate the card. The card, the base itself will already be done and I just simply have to add some elements. Elements I have to add, obviously a number. I have a bunch of tickets here of varying sizes. I will be putting those in there, uh, on there. I will probably, and I've decided I'm going to do it in three segments. I'm going to do uh, a group of, of postcards that are butterflies, a group of postcards that are flowers, and a group of postcards that are houses. And probably in that order, and I figured if I do 10 of each, that gives me one left over, and I already have a plan for the one that's that for, uh, for the extra one that will not follow any of those. So butterflies, flowers, and houses. And I will use stamps, and I will use stickers, and I will use magazine things, um, whatever, to make put, to put those on there. So that's going to be my theme going into the month of July. To that end, I need some more butterflies, houses, and uh, flowers. So I'm going to pause my video, reset my table, and I will be right back. So what I've done is I've pulled out all of my stamp blocks, my acrylic blocks for doing this. I have pulled out tracing paper. This is Strathmore tracing paper. I think I got this from, I don't know, Staples maybe, Walmart. I don't remember. I'm going to take out a couple pages of that. Um, so we've got some of that. I'll set that aside. And then I also have, I got this music it's just a, a sheet, a thing of plain old music. It's um, obviously aged around the outside because it was probably sitting somewhere. It's, it's old in that. I, anyway, I got it from five, five below. Yeah, five below a couple years ago for my husband, who is also a musician as well as a painter. And he said, you know, I'm just... I, I don't use paper to write my music anymore. If I'm going to write something, I write it on the computer. I have a couple computer programs that I prefer to use. So I said, all right, well then, now that I'm doing junk journaling, I'm going to take that music paper back and I use it in my journals. And this makes a really nice page, although I'm not going to use it as a page in my journal today. I'm going to use it for something else. So what I intend to do is to use my papers here and we're going to do some stamping. Now I have all my butterflies out. I also got out my flowers. Um, I didn't get out any of the houses that I have because they're kind of buried and I have to dig them out. And then this is a close to my heart that I picked up at a craft place at one point and I think I want to do that one but we're going to wait on those. We're going to primarily deal with butterflies. So let me take out some butterflies. This was, I think this was a stamping up case, again, that I got from a Dollar Tree of some sort, or a Dollar Tree, a, a craft thrift store. There's the word I'm looking for. And I just put all my butterflies in it. So I want to take some butterflies. And what I'm going to do, I have over here, I have a couple different black pads. I have rhubarb stalk from Memento and Teal Zeal, also from Memento. And I don't know how they're going to work, but let's try these out and let's see what we can do. What I intend for these, you know what, I'm gonna be smart about this. And I'm going to put my monster, this is my glue book, but I'm gonna put it underneath here so I have a little bit softer surface to stamp on. And I'm just going to stamp myself a bunch of butterflies in lots of different colors, in lots of different shapes. I'm going to give myself several of these. And then what I will do is tear them up and use them 
as I go through and do, you know, I just rip that off and stick it on a postcard. And I can color it if I want, but what I like about doing this on the, hang on, I gotta find my lid. Okay, what I like about doing it on the tissue paper is that then I can rip it off and just put it on and watch what happens. When I put it on, like this is a deep purple card, I put that over it and put it down, a lot of that tissue paper will disappear a little bit. So anyway, that's my goal. I'm just making a bunch of these to put on. So let me find a different stamp. There we are. Because I did enough of that kind of stamp of butterfly. And I have, like I said, I have lots of these butterflies and obviously have used them because they are, um, no, not this one. Sorry. Too many things out, I think. I've obviously used these stamps because they're stained. And I just like the impressions that it makes. And I have found that using my big old glue book behind it helps me get a better impression than just doing it straight onto my mat. Okay, I do want my stamping off page. I should have been stamping off the other ones. Let me do that real quick. Stamp those off. There. I will wash those stamps in a little while, but right now, let's just keep going. Okay, I think I've got enough black and white ones for a little bit. Let's try a different, um, there we go, I want a different color. I also have a dragonfly, but I don't think I want to use the dragonfly for this. Not at this point. So let's try Memento. I don't know how the Memento inks are going to work on the tissue paper. I use the CraftSmart ink dye pad because which I forgot to cover um, because I know it won't smear. I'm not using any of the distress oxides because I have found that they tend to smear. Well that looks pretty good. What happens is they they bleed. You you do it and you come back a little while later and it's all like bled all over the place. I'm trying to see if these are bleeding or not. I think they're okay. Okay. Cover up Memento rhubarb stock and let's find a couple of my little ones. I have some very, very tiny ones. Uh, I have some really small ones, but I just want the where did I just put that? There it is. Take that one off. i put this little one on. And let's try that with the... Okay, the Memento is bleeding a little bit. Let's try it with just a couple of these. Let's see if it bleeds with this as well. Yeah, that's bleeding all over the place. So, nope. No Memento. Sorry, guys. You are done. We're going to stick with black because I'm getting the best impressions with black. Okay, stamped that off. Yeah. It's kind of a, a grayish black. And if I decide I really need color in these, I can always just color them in with colored pencils. That's not an issue. There we go. All right, I think I'm going to leave that one as done so I have room to rip things around. Let me grab another sheet. And we'll do a few more. Um, I do want to try the archival ink and see what happens with that. 
I have not tried. Okay, I think this size. I have, my husband gave me the um, acrylic blocks for Christmas when I first got started. And I really like them. Now that's a nice deep, now see the color difference? This is, ends up being more of a gray and that's more of a definite black. This is Archival Ink Jet Black. See what happens if I try a second print. Oh, it comes out all right. Okay, so we'll do one more here and one more here of that particular butterfly. Stamp off. I think this stamping off strip is about done. All right, what else do we have over here as far as butterflies go? What do I have left in here? I've got a lot of little ones in here. That's actually a flower, not a butterfly. But that's a little itty bitty butterfly. What the heck? Let's let's do this one. It's a butterfly with some flowers. So let's see how it goes. That's nice. I like how that comes out. If you notice, I am not holding it down very long because it is, in fact, uh, porous. The tissue paper is a lot more porous, and I don't really don't want them to bleed. Um, the ones that I did that have a lot of ink on them are still not dry. These are all dry. These are not. These first few are pretty, pretty hefty. So, okay, we'll put that ink away. I think we're done with that particular ink. Um, all right, there we go. Some medium sized butterflies. That's just a little itty bitty. Okay, come on. Come on. There we go. I hope I'm on camera for all of this. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. Now, once I actually start doing this next week, on the first, you will see several of these show up on in the first 10 days of my journaling, or not journaling, my postcards. And what do I do with my postcards when I'm done? Well, I think a lot of them are going to go into journals. I never stamped that one off. Now, I do have some very, very tiny butterflies, and I would like to put a couple of those in here. Let me redo my stamp blocks. There we go. So I have my little itty bitty stamp block. Because I have some that are, this one's very small. So we'll do a couple of those. Flitting in between and among the others. Okay. That one's very, very, and then I have some that are really, really small. Now I have to be careful because I just lost a leaf down the drain, and I don't want to lose these guys because I like how small they are. Aren't they adorable? And they're almost like a ghost print. I'm going to take that one off for a minute because I don't think there's enough room over here for three. All 
All right, so those are on the tissue paper. Let me just bring my music paper up. And where's that little one again? Let me put that back on here. And we're gonna do a couple on the music paper. Now this would make a nice border to do something like this along a side of a page. You know, do it for your journal. That would be really cool. Uh, grab a couple of these others that we have used already and that's okay because now we're doing them on music paper. And again, I can rip them out and use them as I wish. Let me see about using the archival ink on the music paper. It was bleeding a little too much on the other, but I think on here it's good. You know what? Close your ink pads. This is why they dry out. Close them up. Okay, yeah, I'm liking how this is coming out. Take that one off and put this one on. We do a couple of these. I'm getting my, I've got ink on me, so now I'm getting it all over everything. What else do I have here? I have this little one. We just did you. I'm trying to keep them all straight here. I've got so many butterflies. Really and truly. Okay, you know what? For let's let's try that memento again and see if it's because it didn't like it on the Okay, does all right here, but I like it better on the second impression. All right, so anyway, the month of July is going to be very different from all of my other months. We're going to be changing things up. We're going to be working with a lot of these papers in creating postcards. 31 of them before the end of July. So when I see you on Monday, Monday will be day one of the Jelly Postcard Play Challenge. And I have to, because I have to get those words in the right order. Jelly Postcard Play. And we'll see what happens. Get your, so I have finished all my stamping. I got a new stamping off page. And I did... A couple of different kinds. These are just some tickets and I did those on these. I've done this on this before um, and yeah I like it but I, I was out of them. In fact I like them so much I've used them a lot. So I did, did those. I also did it on music paper. I did a bunch of flowers both on music paper and on tissue paper that I can then Cut up and use, and of course, I have all of my butterflies. Everything's upside down. So there you go. Just some stamping on tissue paper today, and getting ready for jelly postcard play. Jelly postcard play. Links will be down below. In the meantime, I hope you're having a great time. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And make sure you also click the like button to let YouTube know that you are enjoying these. And if you want a notification, click the bell. And this is Cindy signing off. <laughs>